Danke, Twinkle. Stop it. Hey, this is Rich Outfield. And I'm Big Anglovich. Welcome and, back. Yep, we're picking up where we left off talking about, amongst other things, Green Lantern. <laughs> That's right. I don't know what, 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 where else to go on this. Let's just talk about the special effects for a okay. minute, okay? Because, you know, it looked like a cartoon. You already know what my opinion is. But I would like to know what you think. How could it not, though? I mean, there was about three actual real things that were filmed in this show. The rest was all just green screen. I think they must have clothed all the actors in green, put them on a green screen, and thrown green things at them, like balls that were green and stuff. The whole thing was, it was just like, okay, now he's up in space and there's planets around him, and then uh, he's on this other fake planet that doesn't exist, talking to fake aliens that don't exist, wearing a fake suit that doesn't exist. Yeah, okay. Well, I, I, I've got to just jump in on the friggin' suit thing. Whose idea was that? <laughs> Who said... And let's say that it was cheap. Let's say it only cost two million... Let's say it only cost one million dollars. One million dollars for this suit. This constantly shimmering, gyrating, computer-generated suit. Oh, and the, the mask. That didn't look like a mask. It looked like his. Yeah. He had tattooed his eyelids and then his skin, yeah, it and it, really it was just—it was a, a creepy second layer of skin that was over his face. And it's just one of those things where you draws its attention in the same way that the Rontos in the special edition of Star Wars do. <laughs> it was like, well, you're supposed to be worried about Luke and and Obi Wan and the droids and all that, but here's something going <laughs> in the foreground. <laughs> As he coughs because he's overdone the Rondo. <laughs> but it bothered me because I'd watch it a, a lot. I'd find myself watching his back or his arm or, 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 or whatever yeah. because it was constantly moving and, and undulating and glowing. But then what was worse was there was a scene where he was flying through a computer-generated space and there was nothing that was real except for his face. Mm -hmm. And it looked like the disembodied face of Ryan Reynolds flying through the space. Everything else was flat. And that was the only thing that was actually three-dimensional. And, and I got to mention, I saw it in 2D. Yeah, me too. And it just, it was, what a, what a waste of money on, <laughs> on that. And you know what? It didn't cost a million dollars. It cost yeah. so much more to go through frame by frame and animate and do all this happy crappy. And we, and I complained about that months ago when we first talked about that. Right. Uh, Ryan Reynolds is in incredible shape and he could be in any kind of suit and, and, and sell it. Yeah. It's just so weird that they felt like they needed to do this to make it unusual or, or, or otherworldly or, or whatever, but it didn't work. It looked odd. It looked weird. It looked not right or not real. And, you know, like when Tomar Ray comes out and his body proportions are all effed up, you're like, okay. He's an alien. You know, he's I an guess. alien. I don't think that was necessary either. I think just a dude in a suit would have been fine for Tomar Ray. If you want to CG his face, that's fine, but. You know, yeah, even, make even, his mouth talk like babe or something. That would be fine. But, but I, yeah, I, I don't know. That to me was the most egregious thing. But yeah, they, they had tons of these Green Lantern core members on the poster <laughs> uh, they, <laughs> and in the trailer. But uh, they didn't uh, do anything in the movie. They were in one scene and they all said yes and they put their fists up but they didn't merit being on the poster that would be like poster for empire strikes back and it's got bosk right there right. like come see bosk poster for return of the jedi let me come up with somebody ridiculously obscure rancor for return keeper of the jedi. <laughs> weak way right yeah. here there's a poster come see weak way and return of the jedi but it's just a shame because I think they were trying to sell the global, wow, this is this core thing. And mm -hmm. when I was first explained Green Lantern by a, f a fan, he, that's what he told me is that it's an interstellar police force. Right. And there's members of this police force from all over the galaxy. And they're all different shapes and sizes and aliens. And each one has a patrol. that They go on a sector. And, that, and he's like, oh, it's so cool. And I thought, you know, that, that does sound cool. And when you see that giant cardboard cutout that has Hal Jordan and Sinestro and Kilowog and Tomar Ray and and I could just go on and on and on because there were like 15 of them on there, none of which matter. It makes me think that this is a different movie than we're going to get. Yeah. 
they were trying to save Sinestro for the sequel. Which oh, oh uh, yeah, and Sinestro was cool as hell, and I'm fairly sure that was makeup and not CG. You know, his ears and all that. And I would uh, watch him because he had like scars and stuff on his face, and I was like, wow. Plus, it was Mark Strong with his effed up British teeth, and I was like, wow, that guy is so cool. But I'm biased towards Sinestro. I right. It, it just seems like they uh, went with parallax which is i i've heard of parallax before and i know i I think at one point in the comic book how jordan became parallax or something like that and killed a gazillion people it was and and pardon me if you're a dc fan them ripping off the dark phoenix saga okay and so Hal Jordan had this transformation where he became Parallax, an evil Green Lantern, and he fought and destroyed the core and uh, the Guardians and was ultimately destroyed. And then later somebody said, we got to redeem Hal Jordan. It was Jeff Johns came along. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh... It, it, it wasn't rebirth. really Hal Jordan. It was it was a, a, a force, a, a, a being of, of evil, of fear that, that possessed Hal Jordan. And he wasn't really in control of his faculties, a la Dark Phoenix. You know, but, but, but the real Hal Jordan is still out there, and we're going to bring him back and redeem him. And, <laughs> and apparently it works. You know, I, I shouldn't criticize, uh, but the, the, the Dark Phoenix thing works too. So, you right. know. Once it works, you yeah, do it again and again and again. <laughs> it just seemed like they picked the, the – at least what they used for this thing. This parallax is some kind of galaxy universe-sized thing. I don't know. I guess I'm exaggerating. It's a solar system-sized cloud of munge that's like flying towards Earth or whatever to – destroy and stuff and it seems like that is probably too much for Hal Jordan to take on as his first enemy something to save for a sequel right for the Autobots versus Unicron in the first episode of the series Maybe you ought to go for a regular villain. I don't know what Green Lantern has for villains. Basically, Sinestro and Parallax is all I know. I don't know Green Lantern at all, but he's got to have some I mean just that dude with the big head Hector Hammond. Right. They could have, you know. He, he he got a little bit of an interesting arc, too. Yeah. And it looked like they were really going somewhere. Just, but as soon as Parallax showed up, Hector Hammond was just yeah, not important. Yeah, he was gone. It, they just wasted all this time introducing us to this interesting villain and then just destroyed him. What was the point of that? I don't know. Apparently, there were four screenwriters credited for uh, the script. So that might have something to do with it. Well, I'd also heard that it was a much longer movie and the Warner Brothers wasn't happy with it and they hacked it down. Mm -hmm. And I think you could see some of that, especially in the Hector Hammond stuff, because he was a teacher. And if I recall, he started to be able to read people's minds. Yeah. And then we never, we never see him in school again or anything like that. I don't know what happened with all that. But the whole mind reading thing went away and... I, I don't know. I wanted to see him read Hal Jordan's mind and stuff like that and use that against him to rise up. But it didn't matter. In the, uh, I don't know. There was a lot of stuff that didn't matter. I think Hal Jordan had like brothers and a nephew. Right. And yeah. Stuff like they that. had a big fight at the start of the movie. And then all of a sudden they were gone too. You never go back to them. You never bother with them again. Why did we ever meet them in the first place? It was uh, a lot of missed opportunities. And like, yeah, you know, had they gone with something smaller... It's the origin story. It's his first thing. You really shouldn't have to save the entire universe and beat this thing that's the size of your planet the first time you're up to bat. Oh, I, I agree totally. And but they him, were always talking like this was the beginning of a trilogy. I mean, how many times did you hear that? Or maybe I heard it more because I'm into comic booky things and I was at the panel. But if you're doing that, you know, then then get some stepping stones. Yeah, work up to it and don't. Pardon my French, shoot your wad in the first movie. And, well, and I, I don't know if I want to invoke the name of Daredevil, but when I went and saw Daredevil and it just extinguished three of the main Daredevil storylines in one movie in quick succession and got them out of the way and it ended, I was just like, okay, you guys, you have no more goodwill. You are never to make a sequel. Never. <laughs> If you had set things up and tantalized me, then maybe you would have deserved a sequel. But no, never. And I, I, I know that I'm not king of the universe and can't make this decree, but that's how I felt. It was just like, you know what? I paid to see this. I will never do it again. And I didn't hate Daredevil as much as you did. 
I was just insulted by that. Yeah, luckily I didn't pay to see it. And Although I guess I did because I rented it, so I think that does count as paying to see it. It's just a shame when they do that. I feel like it shows lack of faith in the in the audience. You know, it's, we may not get another chance at this, Admiral. <laughs> I say that a lot, but there's a lot of that stuff that goes on where it's just like, oh, we might not get another movie out of this, so let's hurry and get it all done. And there's something to be said for leaving the audience wanting more. You know, even if if only one out of ten people who see it say, "Gosh, I would like there to be a sequel," I, I think sequels have been made for far less right. interest. And you know, a bunch of people talking and saying, oh, "Gosh, you know what would have been a really good movie to have a sequel to? Buckaroo Banzai, or you know, whatever it is, kind of kind of thing like that." And people just talk about it. A movie like Men in Black didn't need a sequel, let alone two sequels. <laughs> but you know, but Will Smith is kind of desperate for something right now, so. And, and you know what? That might be good. I, I may see that trailer and say, oh, they're going that way. That's interesting. That's cool. Uh, but that's how I felt with Men in Black too. I saw the trailer and it's like, oh, so this time Tommy Lee Jones doesn't know what's going on. And Will Smith is the experienced one. Oh, that'll be fun. Wasn't. Wasn't. No, it was exactly the same, turns out. Yeah, there was a lot of missed opportunities, it seems, with this uh, Green Lantern movie. It definitely needed to be scaled back. And you know, we talk about that. I mean, we you just sent me the link to the new Captain America trailer that just came out like yesterday or today or whenever it came out. And the trailer seems to be all about the character of Captain America and the kind of guy he is and how he'll keep working even though he's a piddly little weakling and stuff he just loves his country and wants to do what he can for his country and all that kind of stuff and it makes you really get to know the character of captain america from the trailer which you usually don't get a lot i mean it's lots of explosions is what you usually get in a trailer and this one instead you get that kind of stuff gives you a little bit of hope when the film comes out that it might actually have a story to it where you get, you know, when we, we mentioned that they tried to give Hal Jordan an arc, but it wasn't given a lot of time. It wasn't given a lot of, you know, learning. All of a sudden, Hal Jordan, no, oh, he's the greatest. He can take on Parallax somehow within the space of a, a day of training or something like that. I mean, it didn't seem like he got any more than that, right? Oh, it's a shame on that training sequence. It was probably five minutes or something like that. Yeah, and then it was That over. could have been a half hour. That stuff is yeah. interesting, man. And they'll never get another shot. And that whole Sinestro being his trainer, his mentor, or whatever, they could have gone into a lot of that. The stuff that you got in Batman Begins, for example. When, With him and Ra's al Ghul. Yeah, when Ra's al Ghul is training him to fight and all that stuff. That was really great stuff. And similarly, in that movie, he has to go and fight Ra's al Ghul in the end. Sinestro turns bad, so you could have had that... Uh, dynamic as well which could have been really cool but instead it was just you know they had a green lantern cartoon not too long ago first flight yeah where it was a similar similar deal you know they did the whole origin story of green lantern and then green lantern had to go and i don't even remember who he fought or what he fought but it was basically the same thing it was like he becomes green lantern and he tries to learn for five minutes and all of a sudden he's the greatest Green Lantern ever. Yay, go Hal Jordan. It would be much better, it seems to me, if by the end of the movie he's still, you know, I mean, there's gazillion Green Lanterns. You see the the trailer where they all raise their fists up and it makes a gigantic green spotlight that goes up into the air. There's that many. He shouldn't be considered the best of them all within, you know, no time at all. Make him at the end of the movie, okay, now you belong with us. Not like, okay, now we're all going to get down on our knees and worship you because you're so great. Yeah, it's a shame. They didn't leave their some, themselves some place to go with that. That's yeah, okay. And, They're not going anywhere because of it. And yeah, I, I hate to go with, well, okay, we're talking about trilogies. You think about the end of Empire Strikes Back. And how good a Jedi Luke Skywalker is there. I mean, he he spends 20 minutes of that movie just getting his ass handed to him. Mm-hmm. I, I was too young to p- talk on the playground and have uh, kids say, you know, Luke Skywalker's an ass, man. I, I never want to grow up and be like that. Uh, but I imagine it didn't happen. I imagine it was like, wow, you know, I can't wait for the next one. I can't wait for him to have a rematch with Clubber Lang. 
with Darth Vader <laughs> and all that. Just, just giving themselves some place to go. The the faith that they had to say, okay, we're going to have Luke lose and not just barely lose. He's going to be so ridiculously outmatched. It's going to be like a Marvel comic book. And I love that. Uh-huh. And people, you know, people be talking about Empire Strikes Back 50 years from now. It's so unusual and brave to do that. And okay, you hear people mock his, uh, that's not his true, mind. that's impossible and stuff. But I don't think it makes Luca a weaker character or anything like that. If anything, you just, you feel for the guy and you understand mm-hmm. and you can relate to yourselves. Times when I should have stayed on Dagobah and completed the training, but I, I was, you know, impetuous or weak or, you know, cocksure or whatever Luke was, he, <laughs> he, uh, he screwed up and Princess Leia saved him. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's pretty impressive that they do that. Now, yeah, I mean, big revelation. I like Empire Strikes Back. But I, I, I don't know. Just the, to give him uh, some further way to go. And I guess Sinestro learned to respect him at the end. But they had so few scenes together yeah. that it didn't really matter. It didn't, it didn't. I, I was hoping that this was going to be like – because that first flight movie, it was kind of like training day. And Sinestro was the Denzel Washington character and Hal Jordan was the Ethan Hawke, mm-hmm. you know, rookie cop being shown around by this experienced cop, but who was super jaded and right. didn't play by the rules anymore and had a really mean edge to him and stuff. And, I mean, you know, I, I don't think I was the first person to make that comparison with those. But you didn't get any of that, really. Right. I don't know. The only other lantern that did anything was Tomar Ray, and it was because he was the nice one that would explain things. Because he was Jeffrey Rush, and they needed to give him some more lines. Oh, I love Jeffrey Rush, dude. <laughs> the movie ended, and he got the girl. He was the world's greatest Green Lantern. He saved the world yeah. just fine. The bad guys were dead. But in the end, uh, what was weird is I didn't think it was as bad as everybody said yeah. uh, when it ended. I was I felt the same way. I was like, yeah, that was all right. I didn't think it was great. I wasn't like, holy crap. It wasn't like, you know, at the end of The Dark Knight where you're like, geez, dude, that was really good. But it also wasn't like at the end of Daredevil where you're like, oh, gosh, oh, I can't well, believe I sat through that. And, and yeah, I, I think... I heard somebody compare it to Batman and Robin, and they said that the really? CG costume was the equivalent of bat nipples. <laughs> and that, and I, I, no, dude, Batman and Robin was uh, an almost intentional destruction of a, right. a, a successful franchise. This was just a misguided yeah. attempt to start a franchise, and the. Only thing that I absolutely hated, and yeah, I, I, okay, I dislike the CG costume. I really did, and the mask I disliked even more mm-hmm. because it, it looked weird. It looked right. like the skin on Rebecca Romaine when she's Mystique. You're just like, what is that? You know, some scale. But the only thing I hated was the the little coda that they put on that. Oh, the, right. The credits rolled, and then they have a coda, and Sinestro turned. Into the Yellow Lantern, the end. And I was so angry. This should have been a whole movie. Right, I totally agree And in 10 seconds with no dialogue, he's a bad guy. And I was like, oh, bullshit, man. You cannot do that. Oh, come on. (laughs) And there were no discussion, no conversation with anybody of how I have to do this or despite what Hal Jordan has accomplished or, no, I need power for myself or anything like that. Nothing. He just puts it on and then it's over. Yeah. Whoever made that decision, F you, sir. (laughs) F you right up your A. I am never going to see another Green Lantern movie because you took it away, what I would want to see, <laughs> and slapped well, to the face. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, do you remember – have you ever sat through the second movie, the second Star Wars? Um, oh, uh-huh. Uh, uh, Attack of the Clones. Episode two. If you sit through the credits, uh, the movie ends with – uh, Anakin's got a new mechanical hand and he, he gets he married gets to Padme. Married. The credits roll. And if you sit through the end, after the, all the credits, Darth Vader shows up with the helmet and the mask and the red lightsaber and the cape. And he walks across the screen and you're just like, wait, what? 
How did he become Darth Vader? All that happened off screen? And now he's Darth Vader in the full costume? Come on, man. That's not fair at all. That is my uh, comparison of what happened at the end <laughs> of Green Lantern. You, we didn't need to see that. We didn't need to see how Anakin fell and became Darth Vader. No, here he is, folks. So you're making that up then. I didn't actually miss this. Uh, I am making that up. Okay, that's good. I was thinking, holy crap, really? How have I never heard of that? <laughs> but yeah, I, I totally agree with you with that. I was wondering afterwards, I was thinking, boy, that was sure lame. I hope when they make the sequel, which they're not going to make, that they go back and give you the... Give you about an hour and 40 yeah. minutes before that happens. The lead up to that. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I guess uh, it doesn't matter. We don't see it. It's not going to happen. The movie made, what, $50 million? Oh, Hold on a sec. I've got to pee really bad. No, you don't get to pee. Just like they don't get to make another Daredevil, you don't get to pee. To be continued. Can you say continued? Continued. Can you say continued? To be continued. Say to be continued. To be continued. Continued. <laughs> okay, I'm done. Okay. That gets my goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. Doesn't have to be, but it is.